Well, everyone, and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today, I'm going to show the installation of a new product from Forward Controls Design. This is the ASF, or Ambidextrous Selector Forward Controls. Now, this is also sold, from what I understand, under the Sons of Liberty brand. I believe they refer to it as the Quick. I'm going to showcase how I install a selector. This wouldn't just apply to this particular selector, but... um. I'm going to show this one, and hopefully you find this helpful with your ASF installation. All right, so we have it out of the packaging. Now, one of the neat little tidbits that Roger from Forward Controls includes is he gives you two extra sets of roll pins that hold the levers in place. So that's nice of them. They also include a new selector spring and a selector detent. So this is a quality component here along with the spring. So if you have a questionable lower parts kit, these will eliminate two possible questionable items from your build. So let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to make sure, of course, that your farm is unloaded. This is a Colt low receiver, so I'm going to take this grip plug out, set it aside. Normally, you'll have two different types of grip screws. You'll have either a flathead, which is a GI style, or you'll have one that has an allen key. This one has a flathead in it. But you want to make sure that you select the right type of tip. Some people will grab the wrong size screwdriver if they have a slotted hole. I don't know if I can get this on camera. There's our slotted bit in there, our slotted screw. We're going to take our slotted bit and remove the screw so we can remove our selector. If you use the wrong size, you're just going to chew up the fastener. We don't want to do that. So we have our screw and our lock washer. Not all grip screws will have a lock washer. If they have any kind of thread lock on it, they'll usually emit the lock washer. So let's move our patches, magnets, and decals out of the way. I'm going to show you the items beyond the screwdriver that we use. I'm going to have some aeroshell. I'm going to have some grease. This isn't just Mobile One grease. You can use any grease. We're going to set aside our pistol grip screw and lock washer. Now, this does not come with the kit, but the size of roll pins are very similar based on my measurements to the gas tube roll pin and the AR-15. Now, this is a longer pin than the gas tube roll pin but the same diameter based on my measurement. So I'm going to use my gas tube punches to install this. So we're going to remove our grip, take our spring out. There's our old selector detent. I'll set that off to the side, and then we'll take the selector out. Now, you may or may not be aware, but when you take the selector out, it has to be in the cocked position. If you try to remove it now, say with the hammer drop, it will not come out. So once you put it into the cock position, you can then slide it out. Just make sure you don't dry fire your hammer into your low receiver when your selector is removed. So we're going to set our selector off to the side, our old one that is. First thing we want to do is make sure that the drum that's included with the ASF fits into your lower receiver. So you're going to have to Cock the hammer again, put it in and just make sure you can move it with your fingers. You don't want to have to hammer it in there and you don't want it to be binding. You want to be able to freely move it with your fingers. All right. You're going to make sure that you line up these notches that are cut in here and this is actually what engages the detent. You want to make sure that these are on the side that the detent resides in. So if you put it in this way, that's wrong because the detent isn't going to engage. So we're going to slide this in. And I'll poke it back out over here so you can see. There's where the detent notches are. What I like to do is I like to take a dab of grease, not a bunch, and I'll just put a little bit into... I got it all over the lower butt. Put a little bit into the recess here where the detent functions. I'll take the detent, 
put it in place. What that grease also does is it serves to retain the detent. So once I push it in, if we happen to flip this lower upside down and shake it, look, our detent will stay in place even if our selector falls out. The grease will just hold it in place. So it's just another helpful hand as you're installing the selector. Next, what you want to do is you want to place your grip back on. And to do that, you'll put your spring back into the grip. And what you can also do here to assist with installation is you can put a dab of grease on here as well. And that will also hold the spring into the grip. So you don't lose it when you're moving it about trying to do the installation. So we will put this on, make sure that the spring aligns with the detent. Once you have it close, we're going to take our grip screw. I'm going to put a little bit of aeroshell on here. You can use thread locker if you prefer to. One thing you always want to be certain of, this is a virgin build, you want to make sure that the, the screw fits into the lower receiver. Now I've already assembled this, taken it off and replaced the grip so I know things fit. But it's possible that if you're not aware whether or not the hole is tapped out properly, you can cross thread this when you're trying to install the grip screw. So always make sure before you do any of this, make sure this fits into there and doesn't bottom out or cross thread or have insufficient size threads. I'm just going to drop this in here. It's probably hard to see. I don't have any lighting to get inside the grip with the camera and the angles we're working with. And I lost it. And these can be a little bit more difficult to install than the ones that have that type of bit. So they tend not to want to stay onto the head. There we go. So make sure you don't cross that or anything when you're installing the grip. And you don't have to go really snug right now because we're not completely done. What I'd like to do is just to make sure that we have proper function before we go hammering any of the roll pins in place. So I'm going to put this lever in over here. Very smooth function, very positive clicks on here. It's hard to convey on camera, but this is probably one of the smoothest selectors I've ever installed. All right, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just gonna test fit to make sure that it fits over the core or the drum. Very smooth. All right, now, now that I see that things are moving properly, I don't have to do any tweaking. And what I mean by tweaking is it's possible that if you have a really mushy selector, it doesn't mean that the spring that you have or the selector that you have is of poor quality. Sometimes the grip itself can have the molding where the spring sits molded too deep. So what you may have to do, and this is not something that Forward Control Designs is advising you to do, but if you notice in the old spring that I pulled out of here, the spring is slightly stretched. Now you don't want to stretch any other spring inside of the weapon. But since this spring isn't under a huge amount of load and it is compressed a bunch, it's okay to stretch this particular spring. So I had a really mushy selector on the factory one here. So what I did was I stretched the spring a little bit and this portion that stretch goes down into the grip. It gives you a little bit more positive feel when you're engaging and disengaging the selector. So that's why this was tweaked. But if you notice, I didn't touch the spring that this is included, that is included in this kit. And uh, it is smooth and positive as it needs to be. Very nice. Now, next what I would do is I would take a roll pin starter. This has a hole in the front of it. And this will hold the roll pin that's included with the kit. And what you can do to cheat a little bit is you can put a little bit of grease on the roll pin. Now it will stay inside the holder and it won't fall out. 
You can also grease the tip a little bit to help it find its way through the hole. Now in here, if the grip's installed, you're probably going to have a little bit of tight real estate here trying to fight for the same spot. So what I would do here is I would come in from the top. It's easier to see. You want to make sure that you align everything and you can use one of the punches as a slave just to make sure everything lines up. You know everything lines up, take your roll pin starter, grab a small hammer, this is just a little four ounce, and then you're going to stop before you start bashing into the lever. Now instead of switching to a roll pin punch, where a lot of people do, if you were to take a roll pin punch, you may have success here. But what can happen is, is the roll pin punch can cause this roll pin to mushroom out if you encounter too much resistance. So instead of going to a roll pin punch, I'm just going to use a standard punch that has a flat face on it. And that's what I'm going to do to drive this completely flush. Now you could put this into a vise, put a mag block in here. I'm trying to do it in the most simple fashion so those who may not have an extension toolkit, extensive toolkit, can do this at home. We're almost seated all the way. Now you can see we're sticking up a little bit there. We're going to try to drive it flush with the roll pin punch. There we go, now we're completely flush. Take some of that extra grease off there, like butter. Now we'll go to the other side, put our lever or our selector lever on, make sure things are lined up. I'm going to do the same thing again, a little bit of grease on my roll pin. Put it into my roll pin starter. I'll grease the tip of it just slightly. Switch over to my fat faced punch. And now my roll pin punch to set it. slightly below the surface. All right, so as a lefty, nice and smooth. As a righty, don't even have to shift my grip to actuate and turn this back off. Very smooth. And it's hard to convey that on camera. All right, let's check for function. Once you have it installed, you're going to take your hammer, you're going to cock it, hold your finger here just in case the hammer fires accidentally, mash your trigger, take your trigger finger off the trigger, and put it on the fire. The hammer should not drop. Then fire it. Don't let it drop by itself while you're holding the trigger rearward. Cock it. Let it go slowly. Make sure the disconnect is grabbing. This has nothing to do with the safety, but this is just a basic safety check. Release fast, release slow, put it on safe, make sure it holds. Now the reason that I'm doing this slow release like this and a fast release is it's possible that you can have it where the disconnect releases, but again, it has nothing to do with the function of the safety. But anytime you change any uh, fire control group parts, you want to make sure that your safety functions as intended. One thing you want to be careful of, and I'll show this with another lower, and this has nothing to do with the ASF. All right, this has a Novetsky slash Magpul selector on it. I'm going to make sure that you can see that it is safe. So we have a chamber flag in it. All right. I'm make sure that it's cocked. All right, now watch this. This is a 60 degree. I'll put it onto the fire position. And the weapon will fire. 
Well, I have the chamber flag in it. They fired. Cycle it. Let's put it on safe. Now watch this. Automatically disables the safety. There's an interface here that has to do, and it's not just this particular trigger, so don't blame the trigger. It's just an interface between this trigger and this selector here. So again, we'll put it on fire. It fires fine. Put it on safe. Lightly touch it, it's fine, but watch when I mash it. I'm not touching it, watch. Off it goes. So, whenever you install any safety, whether it be aftermarket or factory, put it on safe, mash it hard. Make sure it doesn't let go. So, if you guys found this interesting, you found the product appealing, go ahead and check out Forward Control Designs. Pick up one of their selectors. Otherwise, I hope you found this installation helpful and educational, and thanks for watching.